Okay, we have uh, defined the variables. Uh, we have the also defined uh, the constants in this problem, which uh, consists of exact values. And uh, we will use this constant, the CH, CF, and CI, to try to uh, formulate now a problem which um, is, uh, corresponds to, to the problem you have earlier solved by the extreme strategies of constant workforce and, um, and zero inventory. Uh, and then this is now a minimization problem. In contrast to the, uh, the previous example, which was a maximization of profit, we now want to minimize the costs. And <clears throat> in this case, we want to minimize, and I will first use the mathematical notations, but you can also show, uh, see this um, uh, example on the, on the lingo file here. <clears throat> because what we now want to do is to minimize the sum of the hiring, the firing, and the inventory costs for all the periods in the planning horizon. Let's call this T from 1 and up to N to be uh, to use this, uh, uh, or use, we can use the capital T as the number of periods in, in the planning horizon. <clears throat> so this is now the sum of the CH constant, the con uh, cost of hiring one person, multiplied by the H of T variable. So this will now be one, uh, one variable for each time period. Like you also see here in this uh, problem, you have H1 plus H2 plus H3, 4, 5, and 6, because you have six, um, you have six uh, periods in this planning horizon. And in addition, you have the costs of firing, the CF constant, multiplied by F, the number of persons to fire in each period in the, in the, in the planning horizon, the F1 to F6 in this example. And at last, <coughs> we will add the CI constant, cost of storing inventory, multiplied by the number of units stored, I of T. So this is now the mathematical notation. And you can also add, if you had more variables, if you had a variable for production and uh, over time and under time and subcontracting, you should add the costs and the different parameters to this objective function. But we will now just look at these three sets of, uh, uh, of variables, the hiring, the firing, and the inventory. <clears throat> and then we have some constraints here, because we need to satisfy something. We cannot just minimize this, because then every, everything would be zero. So we need to satisfy and meet the production and also, we have what we call the balancing constraints. So we can first define subject to ST, the balancing constraint for the workforce. And that means the workforce, the WT, the exact number of people employed in a period, should be equal to the W of T minus one number of people employed in the previous period plus the number of hiring in the current period and minus the number of firing in the current period. This is, seems to be quite logical, but of course, this is a mathematical or a computer program. It needs to be programmed or uh, specified directly to the computer to understand that this is one of the constraints. This is the balancing constraint for the workforce. And as you also can see, a bit different order of the factors in the first set of constraints here, but the W1 minus W0 minus H1 plus F1 should be equal to zero. This is another way to define this particular constraint. And you have similar for all the six periods here, W1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 which means that the workforce should be 
balanced with the workforce in the previous period and the hiring and the firing in the current period. The next set of uh, constraints is the balancing constraints for inventory, which means that the inventory in one period should be equal to the inventory in the previous period. And plus the production in the current period. and minus the demand in the current period. This is now the balancing constraint for inventory. We will look at the inventory in the previous period, and then how much is produced in the current period, then we will have a total number of items. And then, of course, we have a given demand, which needs to be satisfied. So the demand has to be subtracted from the sum of the previous inventory and the current production, and then the remaining part will be the current inventory. Inventory in period number t. This is what is uh, remaining when you have uh, subtracted the demand from, from the, the current level of inventory. And at last, yeah, okay, here in this, uh, uh, here we have uh, just uh, specified the demands. Uh, you might remember the numbers uh, from the example 1280, 614, 900, 1200, 2000, and 1400. This is the demand in the six months, the six periods in this example. Uh, and here we, in, the, in this uh, lingo file, we use the exact numbers. Here we will use the, the variable, the d of t, or the uh, it, not a variable, but, but this is the, the constant given the demand for each period. And <coughs> then the last set of constraints, the last set of balancing constraints here is the production. And then the production, the level of the production in each period should be equal to the k factor multiplied by the number of days. We know the k-factor, we know the number of days in each period, then we can find out how much do one person produce in one month. And here in this file we have the exact numbers, which is 2.931 in January, 3.517 in, in February, and so on. But uh, writing in mathematical notation, this will be found as the k-factor multiplied by the n for period t, and multiplied by the workforce, number of people employed. <coughs> so the production will be the number of units produced by one person in that particular month, multiplied by the number of persons employed. So these three sets of balancing constraints, and we can see that there are six constraints for each of them, because you need to balance the constraints from one month to the next one. And in addition, we need to define the exact values. We have the W0, which in this example is 300. 300 persons are employed at the start of the planning period. We have the I inventory 0, inventory level at the start of the production period which is 500, uh, which can be used, of course, uh, to meet the demand in January. So we can see the first constraints in the, uh, in the, in the constraint set for inventory. You have uh, P1 minus E1 plus I, uh, mm, yeah, P1 plus I1 plus minus I1 plus I0 is equal to 1,280, and we know that I0 is 500. So we can use of these to meet the demand in January. But also, in addition, you are given the information that you should plan with an inventory level in period number 6, which should be 600. 
And here, this is now defined to be, this should be equal to what might be more uh, well, logical in some way. You could also use that it should be larger than or equal to, but because there could be situations where you rather should have uh, 610, for example, uh, at the end of the, of the production period, because it will then, you don't have to fire one person, which might be costly in the, in the last uh, period. So the, this is uh, possible, but at least if you are, want to have exact 600, you should use equal to in this constraint here. <coughs> now we have defined this problem as a, an LP problem, a minimization problem. And we use the mathematical notations here on the blackboard, and we have the exact values to solve in the problem in the lingo file. So we can now try to find what is the optimal solution for this problem. And push this red bullseye, and you will find the solution here. So you can now see that the optimal solution is uh, 379,320.9. And we might remember from the uh, constant workforce and the uh, zero inventory technique, they had uh, values of 500,000 or something. 569,000 on the zero inventory and 580,000 on the constant workforce. So this strategy will be much cheaper than any of the extreme strategies. And here we can see the value of the variables. We have h1, h2, h3 and h4 is equal to zero, which means that you don't have to hire any people until period number five. But then you have to hire 464.78 and so on. Uh, at least you need to hire some people at that point. And you can see on the F1 variable, you have to fire 27 people in the first period. So you have already 300 people employed, but you have to get rid of 27 in, in the first, uh, first period, according to this optimal solution. Uh, we can also see, because we, we have the balancing constraint, we know that we, uh, there are The, the workforce is balanced with the hiring and firing, which means you see that in period number zero, you have 300 W0 uh, here somewhere. You have 300 persons employed, and this is equal to the, what we have defined in the problem uh, formulation. And then you get rid of 27 people, and you have approximately 273 people employed in period one, two, three, and uh, four. And then in period number five, you have to hire 465 approximately, and you will have a total of 738 people employed in period number five and six. The production level is also given um, as the P variables. So you are producing, what you can see in the p-variables here, uh, 800 items approximately in period one, uh, and then 960 in period two, 720 in period three, and so on. And you have the inventory level, the value of the inventories, uh, inventory parameters, in, uh, variables in, um, in the column, uh, which uh, corresponds to, to the different I variables, I, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So this is now the optimal solution for this particular problem. But as you can see, this is a linear programming problem, and you will get fractional solutions. It's not that easy to employ 272.9529 uh, persons. So this is a bit awkward, so we probably have to do some adjustment. And, as mentioned, the integer program is much more complex to solve than the linear program. If we define that each of these variables 
should be integers using the at g, g in command for each of the h variables, for each of the f variables, and each of the i variables, or eventually what, what is better is using the g in command on the w variables, because then naturally the hiring and the firing have to adjust uh, according to integer so on the, uh, the, the w variables. Uh, but still, if you try to solve it, it might be too complex to, to solve, and you might have a program which is running for several years. So, there are some limitations how many uh, variables that can be defined as integer variables before the problem is un uh, unsolvable by, by these tra traditional techniques. And then, still, it is possible to use the linear program as we have now seen, as an approximation, and find values uh, which is uh, feasible and close to the linear program uh, solution. And this can be done by, by what we call the conservative rounding. We have fractional values on the variables on the linear programming solution, but we can rather round the workforce variables, in this case, upwards. So we can say that, okay, we look at this prob problem uh, or this solution here, and we can say that we should have 272.9529 persons employed in period one, the value of the W1 variable. This will correspond to 273. Round upwards to the closest value. And then we keep 273 in uh, February, March, and April, and then in May, we look at the value there, 737.7352. We round upwards to 738, and keep 738 in, uh, uh, in May and June. Then we have a solution which is quite close to the linear programming solution, but we cannot guarantee that this is optimal. This is not necessarily the optimal integer programming solution, but still it is a good solution, which usually can be, be used in, uh, uh, in practice, because well, in, in real life there are always some aspects which is not possible to use when you are modeling mathematically and solving these problems to optimality. There could be some aspects in real life which makes, uh, uh, makes uh, well, uh, which could be, uh, have, to, have to take be taken into consideration, which makes the optimal solution according to a minimization or maximization problem as not necessarily the best possible, uh, uh, possible, possible solution when you consider all other aspects than the real mathematical aspects you are looking to in, in this model. So let's now look at this conservative rounding solution for this particular problem. And then we, we can try to put up a, a table and see that, uh, okay, we need, need uh, some space here. Yeah? Um, uh, is there a reason why the inventory zero is between N1 and D2? Well, th this is the, uh, the sequence the program is uh, calculating. So, so this is some kind of coincidence. Uh, the I0, 500, was defined as one constant. So, yeah, and uh, it was uh, defined after the other. So, so this is uh, there is no particular reason why why the sequence is like this. So sometimes, the, well, most of the uh, variables are numbered from one to six. But you can see here, w one is before w zero. So this is also a bit in illogical. But uh, well, I can't see any particular reason for that. So the values are w what is important. But we now let's try to look at the solution with what we call the conservative rounding, round upwards to make sure that you have a feasible solution. 
Uh, but as mentioned, you are not guaranteed that this is the exact optimal solution, but it will usually be a very good approximation. So let's now assume that we have the number of workers in each of the periods. <coughs> we have four, no, we have 300 workers in period number zero, and according to this solution here, we have to reduce by 27 and get in period number one, 273. And this corresponds to a value of the firing variable of 27. <coughs> this will give us a production of 800 If we have 273 people employed, we know that each person in January will produce the K factor multiplied by the number of days of working days, which will give us a value of 800. Uh, we have, uh, we can look at the cumulative production too. which of course also will be 800, and then we can look at the cumulative demand, which was 780, since we can use 500, which was already on stock in the start of the period here. Which means that the inventory level at the end of January will be 20. <coughs> and then, Looking at this solution, we can see that we should not adjust the workforce in February, March and April. So we will keep 273 persons in period 2, 3 and 4. Which means that the hiring and firing will be zero. The production will now be uh, adjusted to meet the K factor multiplied by the number of days in each of these months. So we will have a production here of 960, 720, and 1040. Cumulative production add up into that particular month, 1760, 2480, and 3520. The cumulative demand we probably uh, remember, or we can just look at the look at this file. Then we can see the, the demand on the right hand side uh, here, and we have adjusted already 1,280 by 500. So we have 780, and the cumulative demand will then add each month demand 640 to what we have in the previous column. So now, the cumulative demand for February will be 780 plus 640, which is 1420, and then 2320, and 3520. And looking now at the difference between the production and the demand for each month, we will see what is the exact inventory in these months. 340, 160, and zero. So the critical month here will be period number five, uh, period number four, when you are meeting the production, uh, the production exactly to, to the demand. And then you are adjusting the workforce by looking at uh, this solution and you see that uh, here in period number five the workforce should be 737.73 and by using conservative rounding we round upwards to 738 which still should be kept in period number six. 
and then we have some hiring here, 465. And now <coughs> the production in period five will be by 738 workers multiplied by the K factor and the number of days, which gives us a total of 2379. And in June, period six, will be 1622. Which gives us a cumulative production of 5899 and 7521. And the demand will be 5520 and 7520. which means that you have 379 left on stock in period five and one in period number six. So the total inventory stored from one month to the next will be exactly 900. The total number of fired person in this, uh, in this period is 27 and the total number of hired person is 465. And then we can easily calculate the cost of this for, uh, solution. Of the conservative rounding solution, we have the 465 multiplied by 500 plus number of fired persons, 27 multiplied by 1,000, the cost of hiring and the cost of firing. And we have 900 items stored from one period to the next period. And we remember, in addition, we had 600, which was the, uh, the uh, value of uh, I6, which was the uh, number of items which should be in excess at the end of the period. So you should plan with an end inventory of 600, which means that you have to add also these 600. And multiply by the cost of 80, 900 plus 600, multiplied by 80. will give a total of 379,500. So this is now the cost of the solution with conservative rounding and comparing to the optimal LP, LP solution, which is 379,320.9. This is not very much higher. We cannot know if this is the exact optimal solution, but it's at least a very good solution. And comparing to the solution we found by, cons uh, by the constant workforce, which was 580,460 for the same problem with a constant workforce, define a given number of workers needed to meet the uh, period or the critical period. Uh, and then stick to that number, or the zero inventory, or also called the chase strategy, which gave a total of 569,540 in the objective value. This solution is, well, as you can see, very much better. But then you will have to adjust the workforce, not as much as the zero inventory, where you are adjusting the workforce every month according to the production level, but you are finding a combination that you have to fire someone here and you have to hire a given amount of workers here, much higher amount at this point, because you have a much higher demand in the two last month of this planning uh, period. So, <coughs> Yeah, you could try if you want to solve. I'm not sure if it's possible to solve this problem by integers, but uh, you can at least try with some of the uh, of the variables to put in some g in of 
the W1, for example, and see if this is, how does this affect the solution. Now you have defined that W1 should be an integer. The number of workers in January should be an integer number. We remember that the LP solution was a fractional number. And then we can see how does this uh, affect the solution found here. We will get a slightly higher objective value, 379,332.1. And we can see here that now in W1, the value is 273 exactly, which is kept now for uh, the period two, three, and four, but then in period five, you will have a fractional value. So let's now try to put in also the same command for period number five. like this, <clears throat> and see what will happen if we solve this one. And now we are forcing the workforce in period one and period five to be integer values. And it is possible to solve it. And see. But now, Another of the variables have been changed to a fraction. You can see that in period number four, you have gotten a, a fractional value of, uh, of workers. So we can continue putting in, well, this command in for every of the variables of the workforce. It might be possible for this problem, which is relatively small, but at some point, in the, the, for the problem, there will be, uh, it will not be possible to solve in reasonable time because it will take so much time. Because these variables makes the problem, uh, well, it makes it not possible to solve by the well, simplex technique, which is used as the standard technique to solve linear programming problems. And then they might have to use some other mathematical techniques. And it's not always possible when these problems get large it's not possible to solve them to optimality in, uh, in a realistic uh, time. But anyway, to try to solve to, uh, to optimality by integers, you can use this g in command for the variables that you actually want to, uh, to force to be an integer. Okay, I think we stopped there. This was all about linear programming. So far, we'll come back to this topic in another type of problem a bit later in the course, uh, because these linear programs are so-called optimization problem, which can be used on lots of different types of problem. This is only uh, one example in, uh, in production and uh, planning the, uh, the workforce. But next week we will continue with chapter four, and then we will start on uh, inventory management when you have a known demand.